Rick DeBrule here, once again filling in for Steve Magnante. Steve Magnante is doing better on the road to recovery, but it's going to be a long road. So in the meantime, some of us have been helping to fill in with some junkyard crawls on Steve Magnante's YouTube channel. Steve has been obviously doing a great job over the years of these really interesting videos where he just crawls through a junkyard and finds something unique. Uh, Tyler Hoover's been filling in for a while, and now it's my turn to take a, a stab at it. I'm up here at Desert Valley Auto Parts. Now, I live in the Phoenix area, so this is the easiest place for me to get to. Uh, they have three of these. They have one way down south of Phoenix in Casa Grande. They have one kind of in North Phoenix. And then they have this facility. This is way up what they call Black Canyon City. It's about a 45 minute drive from the north end of Phoenix. Uh, but this is where they keep most of their muscle cars. So if you're a muscle car guy, this is the lot where you really want to get a chance to come through. And they do allow you to come through and look at things and buy things. You just have to make an appointment if you want to come up to this particular location. Now, as you're walking around, we're in the, the part of of the, the, the lot where, of the junkyard, where these cars are for sale as is. They probably still have valid VIN numbers. They haven't been taken apart completely. And as you look around, you see cars that are you know, 3,200, 2,200. This particular car, you walk by and it says $6,000. And you're like, wait a minute, when all these other cars are going for two or $3,000, how come this one's $6,000? Well, that's because actually, this is pretty special. This is a 1971 Torino GT convertible. That's right. The top is missing for a reason. Very cool car. They only made about 1,600 of them back in uh, 1971. And if you wanted a convertible, this was the big dog. This was the most potent convertible you were going to be able to buy if you wanted a Torino back in 1971. Now, there were big changes in the Torino world that happened in 1970. Massive body style changes where they went from kind of a, a much straighter lined car, flat hood. In 1970, they went to this particular style. It's got a little more curve. You know, they always call it the Coke bottle styling where you see it kind of goes back like that. But this was a big change this particular year. And in fact, when the Torino was being sold in 1970, 1971, it was actually taking the place in 71 of the Fairlane. They were leaving it behind completely. So let's walk around and take a look at this car because under the hood, we got something cool. And what's really neat is we look around this car, I'm going to guess this has either lived in Arizona its entire life or someplace in the Southwest because I do not see a lot of rust. So if you were interested in doing a restoration on a 1971 Torino GT convertible, well, this would be a perfect place to start. All right, let's start walking around. All right, we'll start by showing off that very cool Torino convertible styling, as you can see. Uh, the roof intentionally chopped off, which is a nice thing. This is that curvy I was talk curve I was talking about right here. It's really inspired by aircraft, the way it was particularly done. Uh, you look inside once again. Yeah, I mean, there's a few issues in terms of rust, but nothing massive. I'm trying to look around. Yeah, I see a little bit of rust down here on that panel down there. I see a few places where it's popping up right there, but overall, not bad. Um, I can even look into the trunk. Doesn't look horrible. Um, this, obviously, the convertible top, which, uh, you know, the frame is still here, although I think yeah, it's possibly salvageable, but obviously we'd need all new rubber, all new cloth. Um, there's the, uh, the motor for raising the top, the pump for raising the top and lowering it. Um, let's see, do we have, yeah, we've got a little Torino GT marking. I'll have to go around to the other side. Um, oh, <laughs> on the outside of the car, normally what you would have Oops, let's move that out of the way. On the outside of the car, normally what you'd have is a GT. Over on this side, you only see the G. We're going to cross over to this side where you can see the full GT, which is exactly what we're supposed to have. Uh, a little bit of drive shaft hanging there. Inside, you've got a Torino GT mounted there on the dashboard. Uh, looks like at some point this had some body work that was done to it. You can see some filler that was applied there. But to be honest with you, it doesn't look too bad. Um, once again, let's see if we can't get just a glance underneath. Um, not bad, all things considered. Once again, for a Western car, it looks kind of rusty, but you folks back east are probably excited to see something like that. Um, and, and, and once again, if you're looking for parts, you know, if all you want is the Torino logo or you want that bezel for the, uh, the turn indicator on the back, it's nice to be able to find a car. It's funny, this Mustang next door has uh, no latch on it. So I keep closing the door and it keeps opening up and I keep having to move it out of my way. But that's the thrill and adventure of going through a junkyard. All right, let's go underneath the hood. 
Now, before I do this, I have to tell you, when we first came out here, I could not get this hood open at all. So uh, Bobby, who works here at uh, uh, Desert Valley Auto Parts, had to help me because what had happened was the cable, it has a double release. The cable underneath had popped, and so as a result, we weren't able to get it. Fortunately, Bobby came through, saved the day, and now we can reveal underneath the hood a 351 cubic inch two barrel carburetor engine that was in this Torino. Uh, I believe this is a Cleveland engine. You can see as the uh, <clears throat> the, the water uh, from the radiator flows in, goes in directly from up above. So I believe that's a Cleveland style 351. Uh, let's see, Ooh, uses regular fuel. And, you know, once again, looking inside, I mean, I don't know if there's any problems inside the engine. That's really hard to tell. But in terms of the way it looks, you know, once again, not a lot of rust. Even the plastic, I mean, yeah, you really wouldn't want to reuse that. Um, but I go back to, if you were looking for parts, if you already had yourself a, uh, a Torino GT, you need parts, great. Uh, but if you just wanted to, to rebuild one, this might not be a bad choice. You know, it would be fun to bring this back to drivable condition to figure out exactly what it is you could do with it. I think, I'm not sure if you could get the, the uh, 351 four, valve, four barrel as an option on the uh, Torino GT convertible. I think it's possible this was as high as you could go. And I do not believe that they were putting, you know, the big engines in these or the Cobra jets. So I think this was pretty much the maximum range for what you could get in a Torino GT, at least a convertible. All right, let's do a little, uh trim tag decoding. You see it down here. What do we have? We have uh, 76F, which means that it was the two-door GT convertible. M is the color, which means it was white. YW was the trim, which also means it was white. Uh, w stood for transmission, the C4 automatic transmission. 62 meant it was delivered to Houston when it was brand new, and that would explain why this particular car has more rust than I would expect to find on a car that had lived its entire life in Arizona. But once again, having said that, you know, I don't think this is horrible in the rust department. I think that those are things that could either be fixed or once again, if, at least if you were buying it for parts, you'd have a good feeling that the parts you were buying um, were at least decent. I love the fact it still looks like it has its original keys right there. Um, yeah, the, the interior, the dashboard, got a long way to go. Um, you know, the seat frames, for what it's worth, could probably be redone. They don't look like they're in uh, horrible condition. Yeah, but yeah, that interior, mostly shot and mostly gone. I love the fact that we still have the rear glass left over from that original top. Uh, oh, look, we got a, got a fan in there. Is that what we're missing up front? Yeah, it looks like we're missing a fan right there. I didn't even notice when I was walking around showing all that. I think this had uh, something in the range of 240 horsepower coming out of that 351 uh, two-barrel carburetor. One of the changes for 1971 over 1970 was actually this little piece right here. Um, for the 1971s, they added this little brake and added this little emblem right here. Interestingly enough, that was true on the GT and some of the lower Torino models. If you got the, the Cobra, you actually got the same grill that came the year before with the, the emblem in the middle. But if you were going to get the GT, well, once again, you got this, you know, little plastic thing that kind of was an insert right in there that told everybody you had a GT and you had the brake. And going to the following year, once again, there was a huge change in terms of the styling from right there in terms of what you got. All right, so there you have it, a Torino GT convertible from 1971. We'll see if we can't close the hood here, get this down. Cool faux inlets on the roof. One of only 1,600 or so made back in 1971. Um, you know, could this car be brought back to the road? I think it's possible. You know, yeah, a lot of work would have to be done. Once again, I don't know what the condition of the engine is inside. I can see the drive shaft is laying off to the side. So I'm not even sure if there is a transmission in this thing. Um, but all things considered, it's a pretty rare car. It's a pretty cool car. If it could be brought back to life, or if you just happen to have a Torino GT and you need a parts car, this would probably be the perfect choice for it because there's lots of great parts that are still left on this particular one. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the most expensive car that you could buy in the Torino range that year, it wasn't the Torino GT sports roof. It wasn't the Torino GT convertible. It was the Torino station wagon. I think it was going to cost you an extra couple hundred dollars above this. So really, if you were wanted economy and performance, well, you were going to go for just a regular Torino GT. Um, but if you wanted the convertible, 
we wanted something really cool. This is what you went for. And frankly, what a great opportunity for somebody if they want to bring it back to life. And once again, just one of the cool cars I found when I was crawling through desert auto parts. Now, this is Steve Mignante's YouTube channel where he does his junkyard crawls. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you want to see more Steve Mignante, and I know you do, then I want you to subscribe to this channel. I want you to like this channel. I want you to come back as often as you can. Steve's hoping to get better soon and hopefully be back in the junkyards. Take care of yourself this week, Steve. We're thinking about you. And for the rest of you, we'll have a great week. And hopefully you'll find something just as interesting as this when you're driving around.